Well, uh, welcome uh, everyone who is online and seeing this and watching this to um, another Bible study here at uh, Christ Harbor. And um, I just want to uh, uh, spend a few minutes here um, kind of explaining what this journey is about. Um, there are many Bible studies that uh, we're going to begin to post online, and we just want the gospel to be uh, the good news that it was intended to be. And so with me uh, today, I'm John, and with me is my brother Max um, in Arkansas, or Kansas, and uh, I am here in Oregon, and we're, we're spending some time in our houses, aren't we, Max, because of uh, COVID-19. Um, yeah. A, a lot of these studies have, have come as a result of much time, a little more time, I guess, at home. And there's a lot of people doing this. They're recording calls and doing studies and so forth. And so here we are. We're, we're, we're recording something that we hope will be a blessing to you. And we want to spend maybe 15, at the most, 20 minutes with you um, looking at Galatians. And um, Galatians is a very controversial uh, well, would you say it's a controversial book, Max? I don't know if it's a controversial one, but um, it's definitely... I, I think it can be. It can be. Maybe that's the... Okay, yeah. It depends on, on what, you believe, <laughs> what you believe. Yeah. So, we. it's funny, just to let our audience know, my brother and I were texting this morning. It's a, it's a Saturday, uh, spring day, we're in April 2020. I don't know, is it the 11th of April, I guess? It's Easter weekend. And um, we were both spending some time, uh, we're two hours difference here, and we're spending some time in prayer and, and scripture reading this morning. And so is he my uh, brother in Christ, but he's my actual biological brother. Um, but uh, I was texting him some, some thoughts this morning and uh, about what, what the gospel is and just just some really cool stuff. And so we began like a, just a firestorm of text back and forth, back and forth. And I said, hey, man, would you like to record a Bible study with me? And uh, he's like, yeah, let's do it. And we didn't know what we were going to do, but I just texted him, hey, man, what about Galatians? And he goes, it's funny you just said that. I was thinking, what are we going to start with? And Galatians popped into his mind. So we believe God's Spirit is moving for both uh, on him and me. And uh, we're excited to be here today. So there's the short little greeting there. Uh, we hope that moving forward, these greetings won't be as long, but just wanted to give you a little bit of, of who we are and what we're trying to do here. Um, real quickly, before we jump into chapter one of Galatians, just some context here of, of this book. Um, essentially, Paul's writing to a group of, of believers that are coming in after he has established the gospel in, in, in churches in this case, in particular Galatia, which was a region that's there in present-day Turkey. And he's gone in with the pure, unadulterated gospel. And after him are coming some people that are teaching um, things adding to the gospel. And essentially, this idea or concept that in order to truly be accepted by God, you had to do this, 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 and this. And specifically circumcision. We'll come to that. And so anyways, that's, that's kind of the context of, of what we're doing here. Paul defends himself and his apostolic authority there in the first couple chapters. Um, and then he's making it clear in chapters 3 and 4 that, that uh, all believers, whether they're Jew or Gentile, they all can enjoy complete salvation in Jesus. And then he finishes um, showing that the gospel of God's grace leads to, to true freedom and godly living. So he's not overlooking godly living. Um, but um, the essence of this book or this letter is really addressing uh, the gospel and how it is that we're saved. So there's a short little intro. Anything, Max, that you want to add to that before we uh, read the first five verses here? No, that's, that's good. I think, uh, yeah, you hit it as far as uh, walking down through the, really, the uh, layout of, of the book or the letter. Um, but... Uh, you know, yeah, really focusing in on that, that, that a person is not justified to the works of law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And, and uh, it's, it's a, just a powerful letter, really. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so well, let's start reading. Max, why don't you read, uh, starting there, chapter 1, uh, read verse 1 to verse 5, and we'll see if this will fill our time up. If not, we'll keep going. 
It says, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. So <laughs> there's some, <laughs> a few things that there's we a, hope. Yeah. <laughs> there's the okay. So you can we, we yeah. Well, and we'll just keep going until you know we we trust God's spirit is moving and this is His word. His word is living, um, and God's spirit is alive and well. And we'll come to some thoughts on, on on this. But just for those that are maybe new to the Bible or new to to Bible study, Paul writes just about every letter with this greeting. Um, that comes uh, at the beginning of the letter, um, and it's interesting here in the very from the very get go, in verse one, um, that Paul is as again as it was introduced or mentioned in the introduction to this letter is uh, telling his readers his listeners, um, I'm an apostle, not from man, <laughs> nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father. In other words, Paul was very confident and comfortable in his identity, not only as, as who he is as a child of God, but in the mission that God had put him on. And so he's letting people know, hey, I write to you, not as, you know, from some, some office, you know, in the temple, uh, you know, like I, I, I'm not, I, I, the only authority I carry with me is the authority that God has given me, is what he's saying. He's letting people know, right? Like, like who he is. God called me to be an apostle, and I'm not ashamed of that. Um. Yeah, I I, uh, I agree with you. I think you know we're seeing that immediate defense, right, from from his apostolic authority, right, right from the get go, verse one. Yep. But really, he, you know, he says, you know, it's not through. Not through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. You know, really just laying it out for them. All right. But I think also maybe to give um, maybe some backing to what he was preaching as well. Right. What he was writing. Mm, right. Good hey, point. It's, yeah. not through, it's not through man. Right. What I'm going to say it might be contrary to what you've already believed. You might believe something contrary to what I'm going to say to you. But this isn't coming from me. You know, this is coming from God. God's called me on this journey, and I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm serving the Lord, and what I'm about to tell you is from Him. And so you see that immediately. Uh, you know, hey, this is, this is uh, through Jesus Christ, God the Father, who raised Him from the dead, right? The resurrection, right there, right? Yeah. Again, God is, hey, this is, this is the real deal. This is coming from God the Father, Jesus Christ, the one who He raised from the dead. You know, the one we know, the one you've heard of. All right, that's who is called me. And this is uh, what I'm about to share with you. So it, it's, you know, in verse 2 there, and all the brothers who are with me, right? Hey, we're, we're in this together. We've been called, again, maybe defending his brothers that are with him as well, preaching the gospel. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really good. And, and really, uh, again, laying that out there, I think, as far as, yes, a, a defense of his apostolic authority, but also just... To, to maybe put some meat on the bone and on what I'm about to say to you. It's not just me. This is from God. Good point. Um, other other ways he's introduced or put in the greeting, I should say, like in Ephesians, it says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. So we're going to come into that will of God here in just a second in verse 4 uh, of, of Galatians. But you're right, man. God had obviously a message to give to the churches and Paul not only um, not only was a messenger of that but Paul himself experienced it on the road to Damascus you know like yeah. to even to even put more meat on the bone Paul's not giving some philosophy or idea that hey this sounds really cool this is a really you know it's contrary to what you believe it's, it might be a little different than what you're used to but Paul is also saying not only is it different perhaps than what you're used to but I myself experienced it. Like, I'm a recipient of it. Not only am I called to be an apostle, but I, I was first and foremost called to receive the gospel, 
Like that was the that was the experience Paul had on Damascus. He was called. It was God's will, right? That Paul, that no none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's will. And so Paul is not only preaching the gospel, he's he's living it, right? He he says he experienced a transformation in his life, where in one point in his journey he was killing these very people. He's now addressing as brothers and sisters. He was a persecutor of it, and and. Just while I'm thinking on that for a second here, I've been reading this book, and you know, it's a pretty amazing feat for someone to be raised back from the dead. Would you say that that that's a pretty amazing yeah, miracle? That's, that's definitely supernatural. It's beyond really our understanding. So Jesus um, kind of puts the nail in his own coffin, if you will, when he raises Lazarus from the dead. Um, if you haven't raised, read that story, it's a beautiful story there in the book of John. I think John 11 around there. Um, Jesus raises Lazarus who had died from the dead, kind of knowing that th- this was kind of, this is going to, this is really launching me on the road to Calvary. Um, because yeah. it says there that after this experience that the, the, the leaders, the religious leaders, then they sought all the more to kill him. It says there in, in John 11. And so yeah, it's like every time he did something, they, they ramped up intensity yeah. on our plan, right? How and and how are we going to stop that? Yeah, because they, 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 there was no way they could doubt the miracle that they had seen. they like, man, this guy just raised somebody from the dead. We, we got to silence Jesus now, and we got to silence this guy, Lazarus. Like, they, you know, like something has to happen. Now, my, my point in sharing that, going back to, to this idea of, of being raised from the dead, um, it's one thing to see that amazing miracle, but really the miracle of all miracles going back to Paul here is that somebody's heart who is used to defying God. I mean, Paul wasn't even defying God. He was a religious leader, but someone who is so bent on the destruction of someone else or so bent on rebellious living or whatever it is, you know, ungodly, uh, you know, um, without strength, you know, just someone who is bent on a path of destruction for God to take that person, to reach into their heart, to transform it, and to put them on a new direction, that miracle right there, bro, is, I mean, yeah, it's amazing someone can be raised from the dead, but that's what I'm saying. Paul, Paul experienced a miracle of all miracles. And really, that is a death, right? A death to self, raised anew into newness of life, following now a new cause, a new purpose, truly being freed from sin. And yeah. now he's, he's addressing these people because, again, he's had a personal experience with the gospel, with Jesus Christ. And so you're right, man. He's addressing them. Listen, I've been sent by God. This message is not mine. I've experienced, and I want you to experience it as well. And I want you to be aware, we'll get to that in a moment, uh, that some other people are going to try to pervert this. Sorry, that was a little bit of a yeah, tangent. Absolutely. But, um, no. I was just turning back to Acts because I was looking at really that 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 conversion of Saul as you were talking, and uh, yeah, I mean that's it's, it's yeah because I mean you can imagine the reluctancy if if people still Ananias was reluctant, but you know as as Paul continued on his ventures, I'm sure people at different churches rumors and gossip and all the things that were going around, and I'm sure people were very reluctant. Like, hey, wait, this guy's preaching something contrary to what he once was killing people for. I mean, he's, he's preaching the same thing he was killing people for, but you see what I'm saying? Like, right. you know, people are reluctant to, you know, now accept a message that he was, uh, you know, That's so against attacked. and so opposed yeah. to. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I mean, it's kind of, it's. I mean, I think the modern day analogy would be we're living a life that's completely contrary to the Word of God. And then when you do experience Christ and a conversion experience in your own life, it's hard for some people to accept because you live a life that's so contrary to what you're doing now. And, uh, but, you know, if you could stress that point, maybe we should stress, hey, this is not my own doing, but it's from God. <laughs> yeah. You know, that might be, hey, I, you know, I can do no other. The Lord has led me to where I'm at. But um, not to digress, I just, yeah, it's good stuff there. Just well, but you, you make a point, and I just, not to belabor the, the point, but the hardest people to convince of a change is often the ones that are closest <laughs> to us. <laughs> yeah. And... I don't want to necessarily spend too much time on that, but you and I have both experienced something 
and we continue to experience things as we spend time drawing closer to Jesus, walking in a relationship. There's just some amazing things that we hope we can continue to unpack as we move on. So Paul is addressing people. He's experienced something. He lets them know that God has sent me because, and it's the God that raised Jesus from the dead, by the way. It's not some other God. It's the one who has the power of life, the power over death. And verse 3 uh, he often uh, has this greeting to his brothers and sisters, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to stop there for a second, man. <laughs> Oftentimes as a parent, when I've tried to teach my son something, and for whatever reason, he chooses to do it differently and maybe even disobeys. The first thing I often say is not grace and peace, son. <laughs> like, you know, Paul could have said, listen, what are you guys doing? Why are you listening to somebody else? You know, he, he doesn't like start just going in with a railing on him like, hey, man, you guys need to. Did you already forget the gospel I sent you? Like, he, he is extending, like, it's like God is saying, okay, Paul, before you just start railing on him <laughs> and remind start to he to rebuke him. them, let's remind them. And let me remind you, Paul, grace and peace, brother. Grace and peace. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, that's, you know, being the, going through the toddler stage with, you know, Ava, my youngest daughter, it's, it's dealing with, there's times where I felt like the Lord moving my life and then deal with it with grace and peace. And there's times where I obviously had not dealt with it with grace and peace. Right. Mm -hmm. And so addressing some of these things at her age and trying to reason. And I think that's really what Paul is trying to say. Hey, look, regardless where you're at, maybe you've believed some lies, right? Maybe you, yeah. you've fallen away, right? Grace yeah. and peace, right? We're, we're, we're trying to get you back. You know, my ultimate goal, I think always, even if you say things in, in that we read in here that seem, seem harsh and, 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 you know, uh, they might be taken that way, but I, I believe ultimately his goal was redemptive, right? And he knows that's what the Lord's goal is, redemptive, redemptive, excuse me. But, you know, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, right? This is what God, God offers grace and peace to the most wicked individuals on the planet, you and I. <laughs> I mean, and our hearts are, 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 are wretch, you know, wretched, man. We, we, we do things that are contrary to what God has in store. And, uh, you know, opening with that, like you said, instead of coming out just blasting, right? Sometimes we can do that same thing. Modern day analogy, how does this apply to me today? We can do that same thing with other individuals around us. It doesn't necessarily have to be members of our family. We just, yeah. somebody goes, uh, does some contrary to the way we, we would desire or want. How do we treat them? But, well, because, you know, you're go ahead. I was just saying, because verse six, he go, <laughs> And we're not getting to verse oh, six he's yet. Right answer, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he's but like, I I'm mean, a, he goes, I'm astonished that you are so yeah. quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ. Like it's, it, he gets to the point, right? But I just, I, I wanted to spend a moment on, on verse three before we get into that. Cause like you said, man, not only Paul's not extending this grace and peace. He's not saying, Hey, it's from me. He says it's from God, our father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Like even though yeah. you you may have gone down this path, you may have started to you know follow the circumcision, you may have believed the lie, you may have you know practiced it and thought, okay, well if God wants to accept me, I got to do this, this, and this, and He says, listen, grace and peace to you from God and Jesus Christ. Like yeah. there's there's a wooing there, right? Like let me soften the message before, like hey, listen, I've got some pretty heavy stuff to share with you. But no matter where you're at in this walk, I want you to know, first and foremost, God's grace and peace has not left you. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and, and you know, hey, let me bring you some, some healing and comfort before I bring the, the chisel and the hammer. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, he addresses some hard issues. And I think sometimes in the church, you know, situations wherever you're at, you don't, you don't want to, you don't, you know, some of those situations are uncomfortable. So it's, it's, yeah, grace and peace, and and as you move on and, and kind of flow down through that, man, four and five, you know, really just kind of taking the, that whole passage at once is, uh, there's just a lot, a lot to unpack in there, and I think a lot of comfort as well as it continues on. 
Yeah, so let's do that because we, we've got 15 minutes now that we've just hit. And that was uh, for us discussing. Here's where we're warming up. Max and I are just, this is our first one together. So we're kind of feeling this whole recording thing out. But let's, let me, let's wind this down. We're going to stop this episode and then we're going to come back at you guys with another one. Uh, picking up in verse 6. But as we wind it down, like you said, Max, um, verse 4, you know, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, He is the one that gave Himself for our sins to deliver us from this present evil age, including our hearts, right? Our, our, our selfish natures. And that was according to God's will, the Father's will. Yeah. Like, let me remind you, about the gospel real quick before I start addressing this false gospel, right? Here's the gospel in two verses. Jesus died for your sins to deliver us from this present evil age. And this was God's will for your life. Yeah, I mean, like in verse 3, man, grace and peace from God who gave himself. And like he just expounds upon the grace and peace, right? This is what God is offering you, grace and peace from the Father, from Jesus Christ. And here's how he's done it. Right? He gave himself for your sins to deliver you. See, sometimes I read this and I like to put in my name because for me, in my experience and testimony of where I've been, I need to be reminded quite often because I believe a lot of lies about the, the character of God and my perception of God and, and of, you know, uh, of Father and Jesus Christ. So, you know, when I read that, I say, you know, he gave himself for me, right? for my sins and to deliver me from the present evil age. I'm facing, I'm living in, a, in the present right now in the evil age. We look all around us. There's evil all around us in the world. It, it doesn't take long to see that. Yeah. And it's within myself as well. I look within my heart. I find, I don't find good things. So um, he's going to, you know, he's delivered me from that according to his will. Like you said, this is his will. This is what he desires for us. He's not going to force it upon us, but this is what he's offering. This is who he is. Grace yeah. and peace. Let me show you what that looks like. Here's, here, here's what he did. He became a man, and he died for you, and he gave himself for you. And uh, this is his will. He wants deliverance, redemption, salvation, right? And this is the language that he's using. Uh, uh, using excuse me. And then verse 5 there, again, he's leading believers and those who, yeah. who, want, who want this gospel away from glorying in themselves. To him be the glory, right? It's, yeah. it's honor and praise goes to him. This is he's done it, not you. So really, like you said, in a few uh, in a few short verses, before he starts to dissect the issues that these churches are facing, he's already just re relays out the gospel for him in like yeah. three verses. Here it is, yeah. and um, it's not about boasting in yourself. It's about Jesus Christ, what he's done for you. It's about the Father. Um, so. It's powerful, man. So we're going to pause here for just a moment. And you that are listening, those of you that may be watching this, we hope you're finding encouragement um, in just our casual conversation over this letter. But just a, uh, an appeal to whoever may be listening um, that God loves you and that He's for you and not against you. And that this gospel is a gospel of peace it's a gospel of grace. It's a gospel of, of new life in Jesus Christ. And, and the gospel just really entails all of these things. So we don't know where you're at in life. Maybe you're at uh, you know, an unrestful state. Maybe you're anxious. Maybe you're troubled. Maybe you carry a load. We don't know who's listening, but we just want to encourage you wherever you're at um, to just uh, cry out to Jesus. And uh, He knows how to... Uh, teach you and lead you and of course he knows how to save you because uh, that's what he's in the business of doing so we're going to pause here and uh, wind this one up and we'll pick back up here in just a few minutes with uh, well for us just a few minutes and uh, pick back up in verse 6 uh, grace and peace to you our, our, our listeners All right.